Now, my next guest is an Emmy Award winner for his work on Saturday Night Live and the longest tenured cast member in the show's history. Please welcome Kenan Thompson. Hello, 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 hello. My good brother, brother good brother, good brother. How I'm are good. you, man? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little concerned about you, brother. Oh, yeah? Because I recently saw you uh, on Mike Tyson's podcast, man. I was worried about myself. You worried? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check it out. If I'm not a nigga, I'm nothing. Not true. You can't control the way I f***ing think, nigga. I'm not trying to. I talk to all these yeah. people there. They're white, I don't care. They all look at me as a nigga. Else they don't, I expect them to. That's where we agree to disagree. Because I, agree I look at you too. as a king, my brother. Yes. Now, did you, did you fear for your life in that moment? Well, I mean, nobody wants to upset Mike Tyson. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we all played punch out as kids. Not, <laughs> yeah, it's not how you want to start the day. But I, I know him, you know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. that's my brother, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's, it, it was more like an older brother trying to make his point, you know what yeah. I'm saying, like to his little brothers. Like, but it was shocking for me to hear that from him, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And like, I, I don't know, I, lately I've just been on that continual, like, we need to talk more about the uses of that word. Right. And, like, I believe I understand what you were trying to say. That's why I'm intentional about saying peace king, peace queen, you know what I yeah, mean? Right. But, my but, bro but my brother, that. bring my the brotherhood, brotherhood back. That's right. Yeah. Expound on it, though. Why do you think that word is such a low vibrational word? It allows for the disrespect of our culture to the point where it's detrimental, to the mm -hmm. point where you're getting looked at as either a threat or less than or someone to be not, you know, treated as you know, someone who is feared when you're getting pulled over by the police or whatever and all these reactions with like life and death situations. I don't know, I, I can't continue to just see people grabbing their phones when these things go down and nothing happens, but we just wanna continue to just be lazy about the conversation of it all. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying like I'm telling everybody to stop right now, don't ever say that word again. I use it, you know, when I'm being casual and I'm around, you know, friendly ears or whatever, but it reflects upon the innocent, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it's a struggle not to use it, man, because sometimes there's no other word to describe these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> it I is a low know. vibrational word. It's too much blood attached yeah. to that word for it to ever be a real term of endearment, you know what I mean? A, a thousand percent, and I don't think anybody that's, you know, already on the outside of treating people, you know, in our culture with respect or whatever are just gonna, you know, switch up because yeah. they're gonna, like, Oh, now I use that word in a different kind of way. I don't see that like ever really nah, happening. I agree. So. Now, uh, Chris Rock, you know, he was on with uh, my man Kevin Hart on Heart to Heart, and uh, he he told Kevin Hart that after SNL for a minute, black audiences were a little distant from him, and he used the term white famous. Another former SNL cast member had to show white famous, my man Jay mm -hmm. Farrell. Because you have been on SNL for so long, have you ever felt that way? <laughs> I actually do. I mean, I, I think I'm a bit of a conundrum because I had been working before I got there, so I still have a lot of, you know, N-word love from <laughs> my Nickelodeon days and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And, like, I just, I already had a lot of love coming into SNL as far as, like, the hood is concerned, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or the real people, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I raised all y'all, you know what I mean? And, like... Yeah. So, like... I mean, it's true. But we're not gonna I, act like Good Burger wasn't big in the hook. Yeah. All at right. At the same time, I do run into people on the street that be like, "Yo, where you been at?" And I'm like, "I'm on TV <laughs> like every week." And it's like, "Nah, I, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the movies and you know this and that." Yeah, like, let's talk a little bit more about SNL. I know uh, they're celebrating their 50th anniversary in three seasons. Yeah, crazy. And, and the rumor is the show is ending at its 50th season because uh, Mr. Lauren Michaels doesn't want to do it after age 80. Is that true? Is that the rumor? That is the rumor. Okay. Uh, That's what the streets is saying. All right, well, I need to start planning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you already are. Come on, stop. That's gonna uh, cause some Come changes. On. Come uh, on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, it, there, there could be a lot of validity to that rumor because 50 is a good number to stop at, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. an incredible package. You know, he's the one that's had his touch on the whole thing. So if somebody tries to come into his shoes I, you know, it's a good opportunity for NBC to save money as well, you know what I'm saying? So maybe they might slash the budget, and then at that point, you can't really do the same kind of show, so that's... So you're saying the show could not go on without Lauren Michaels, is what you're saying? I'm not saying that, I'm just saying it opens opportunity for a lot of bullshit to come into the game, because word, word. he's such a legend that he keeps off those, like, corporate wolves, if you will. Not to call them wolves, but it's business, you know what I'm saying? They're wolves and vultures. They spend a lot of money on that show every yeah. week. It's an expensive show, but... It's a one-of-a-kind thing. It's the only one, you know what I mean? And, you know, live from New York, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Are, are, you, are you planning for the future? Because you do have your production company. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you, did you, we, we work it. We got saying? projects yeah, yeah, together. Yeah. But, but did you do that because you know SNL is done in a few years? No, no. I did that just because it's one of my aspirations, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. to become a producer and, and put people to work. So we we getting real busy with that with our, you know, artist for artist company and... Yeah, you know, I'm a big advocate of for mental health, man. And I, I love the new show you're doing based on an Instagram feed. My therapist says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Lola, man. That's right. what's up. Yeah. What, what about that project appeal to you? Like, yeah, mental health is, you know, hypercritical, especially these days. I mean, we witness it almost on a weekly, you know, if not every other day kind of basis when something horrific happens or whatever. Yeah, you know, I'm a big advocate of you know, speaking on that. I know you do too. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. You know. What do you do to, you know, reduce your anxiety? There was a strange smell coming from the back of the what is studio. It? What was it? A little loud smell. It smelling loud? A little oh, loud. I don't know. I took a walk. I, was, I, don't, I, you know, okay. I don't know what. It's nice out. It's warm outside. You yes, know, yes, yes. It's Times Square. So yes. I don't know where that smell was. He took that walk that all cousins take at Thanksgiving you know, right before dinner. That, yeah, right. that, that uncle walk. That uncle walk. <laughs> 